Hey everybody, this is Baylor. Welcome to the channel. We're going to take a look at adding authorization and visibility to a graphical application in Rails. So what I've done here is I've created this cheat day application and the idea is being that you are a vegetarian or a vegan by choice, right? And sometimes you cheat. And so what we want to do here is track that, but not everybody gets visibility into this, right? So as you can see, I open up and I query my foods here and I get these counts. And we want to make it so that these counts are only available to people that are meddlers. And so what I've done here is I've created this schema where I've gone with these foods here and I've gone in and I've tried to create a point map here. So based on the different types of foods, we have better scores and those scores result in the number of cheats. And I've also created two users. So we have a Bob and we have an Alice and Bob is a meddler. And so what Bob can do is when he queries the foods, he can see how many times people have cheated on this food versus this food, right? So what we're gonna do here is we wanna make it where this is not available to everyone. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at two different options for doing that. So we'll hop into our food type and you can see I have this field for the cheated count. And what we wanna do is come into here and we wanna define a method called visible with a question mark. This is Ruby, remember? And this visible takes in a context. And what we have here in our context, we take a look at our GraphQL controller, we have the current ability, which comes from can, can, can. And so what we can do here is we can say, I want to take the context, my current ability. We're going to say we can read the food cheat count for a food object. And when we refresh the page here, you're going to notice that the GraphQL schema for our query and our food type hasn't changed. But if we go over to my other browser window, where I'm logged in as Alice, and we type in the same query, we get a squiggly line. Because if we go to our food type, you'll notice that it doesn't exist. And so this method, by doing it this way, allows us to hide features from our API. And this, to me, is perfect. Because if you had an application that did this, you'd do the same thing. You would just hide the values. But what we can also do is we can make it where we just can't access it. But the problem with this is you notice that when we're going with can, can, can here, we're passing in a class of food. This doesn't let us know if we can actually see the food cheat count on a particular food. And so we have another option to do here is to come in, define an authorized method. And this takes in our object, which we will name food. And then we also take in our context. And so what we can do here is we can do the same thing, except now, well, instead of typing in the food class, we'll type in our object food that we get passed in. And in this particular application, it's going to do the same thing, that we query our cheat account and we get it. The difference is, now that we're Alice, and Alice isn't a meddler, when we query this one, we just get null. And so that's everything you need to know. You can set it to be visible, which hides the feature entirely, or you can check to see on a particular object, which is our first parameter, that can we actually do that? And this is done through CanCanCan. So I want to thank you for watching this video and have a great day.